Ah, let's oh, let him say who it is. Ah, Sylvia, my ex-wife. Whenever I think things can't get any worse, I think about her and how she totally screwed up my life. She's a woman who loves a man, any man, any time. I'll never forget the day I came home early and caught her with the upholstery man. Oh, there you are. I just got done with the chair. I'll be sending the bill to your husband. Oh, Rudy. Let's not think about my husband right now. I was I was watching you upholster and you're so big and strong. Do you really think so? Well, yes. No. God, I've only known you for ten minutes and I feel like I've known you forever. Oh, yes, look. And look at this muscle. Oh. The way you hold me, Tex... Tex never held me like this. <clears throat> oh, kiss me, Rudy, and set my lips on fire. Okay. Okay. She meant that metaphorically. <laughs> but little did you know that Ruby had a lip fire pistol. <laughs> oh, Tex, honey. I wasn't expecting you home so soon. Well, duh. Obviously. Now I know why the Rota Rooter man keeps calling and asking whether we need our plumbing checked. Well, I got to admit, those chairs look pretty good. Uh, thanks. Listen, how about I don't charge you on the labor and we call it even? Fair enough. But from here on out, Rudy, customer servicing doesn't include my wife. See, honey? I saved you some money again. Aren't you happy? I married her for better or worse. Unfortunately, it never got any better. What's she doing hanging around his office? I, I don't know. It's a bit strange. It's as I like though having affairs live in, the office. in my husband's office. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I leave now to go all the way to his office. Because <laughs> they can't have been living here. Because, I mean, look, all he's got is that one thing there. And I'm sure he's only lived here since he split up. Should have to lay on top. It's so bad. A bit uncomfortable there. It is a bit bizarre I... though. Ah, oh, where can I, where can I <laughs> hit on people that I won't be discovered? <laughs> Texas office, excellent. No, it's a bit like where you have to have the main character in the scene all the time, even if he's not needed. It's like, but this is obviously the main character is the room, so it has to be. You <laughs> <Yeah. know. laughs> Tex is just a supporting character. The room is the protagonist. It's actually the room that solves the, the, the mysteries, the crimes. Exactly. It's like, what's that room? It was the gardener. My god. <laughs> I love my comfy chair. I just wish it wouldn't be so easy to tip over whenever I got drunk. Ah, oh, he's referencing the opening cutscene. This one really isn't art, it's a placemat from Taco Bob's. Ah, that famous restaurant. Hmm. What have we got here? Oh, the music slowed down. Yeah, it's... So I've not got DOSBox set properly. The UI of U was the only place that would accept me. Half the course credit was earned by locating the university. Ah, I spent weeks earning this baby. Best 20 bucks I ever spent. Things look pretty slow on the street today. <laughs> jukebox, isn't it? Yes. Let's have a listen. My phonograph's an old family heirloom. I love to play the classics. Cool and the Gang, Peaches and Herb. Oh, great. <laughs> the door to the street. I think you can see it better from outside. Or from this side. Tex Murphy, PI and dance instructor. Uh -huh. The air outside feels thick like I'm breathing through a pair of dirty gym socks. It's a high radiation day. Most everyone will be staying inside, but I need to hunt for some work. I always like to start the day with a traditional PI breakfast. <coughs> 
Mm, that hits the spot. This is Chandler Avenue, which has a very exciting theme. Nice skybox there. Oh, yeah. And that's his speeder. My trusty 31 lightning bolt speeder. I still regret not getting the sun off. Just press it and hold down on this for some reason. Okay. Ah, now who's this? Newsstand. Chelsea runs a first-rate newsstand. Ah. Chelsea's a hot little number. I hear this she's is the woman in the uh, Wild show. West outfit. The only isn't weird it? thing about her is she won't go out with me. You're not supposed to know about that yet. Oh. Uh. Chelsea Bando's the kind that could hold her own with anyone, but she has a way of turning my knees to jelly. She's a mutant, just like everyone else in this part of town, but she's a real beauty. What's mutated on her, then? Well, hello, stranger. No one knows. Uh. I've, I've suggested that she might have six navels. Hmm. Be useful for, like, keeping things in. Yeah, you could have your own little fluff farm then. <laughs> uh, right, so this is the conversation system. It doesn't give you actual sentences, it gives you themes. I see. Uh, so what should. I think. Uh, well, if it was me, I would be charmingly curious, I think. Tell me, gorgeous, has the new oh, true detective God. come in yet? I wouldn't have said that. Yeah, but you got to pay for it this time. Hey, when you finish a magazine, it is in no condition to sell. Uh, which one there? Sarcastic retort, deeply insulted, or macho PI talk? I wouldn't be sarcastic to her. Macho PI talk. Well, think of it this way, Chelsea. Reading True Detective makes me a better PI, and good PIs are hard to find. Well, you know, Tex, you just might have a chance to show how good a PI you are. Hey, had you heard that Rook's place got wrapped? Got wrapped? Yeah, the, the audio glitch. <laughs> the audio glitches for some reason. Um. So, are you on the case? Um. Oh, do we know about that? Do we? Rook's place? I don't. Do we? We we no, we don't know about that. We yet. don't. Uh, I don't know, but we're eager for information. Uh, let's go for that. No, I didn't. What do you know about it? Ah, and now we have the ask menu. Let's ask about Rook. Mm -hmm. Rook acts like a tough guy, but he's a softy. Just don't tell him that to his face. Let's ask about her. Oh, you know me, Tex. I'm just making ends meet. See, for some reason it gives us options to ask about all these people that we haven't met yet. I mean, we've met the Colonel. <laughs> but these are all people in the street. Louis runs the... Um, the cafe. Francesca r runs a pizza takeaway. Sal is Francesca's wa uh, <laughs> wife. <laughs> Francesca's husband. Um, mm -hmm. And Ardo runs the hotel. So let's ask about Louis runs the cafe. I love Louis, but his friendliness doesn't fool me. He's a sharp one. He knows everything that's going on in this neighborhood. Sal's a handful. He's a nice guy, but I don't know, I feel kind of naked when he gives me the eye. Uh, Fran. Franny's a live wire. Either she or Sal is going to do time for killing the other one. I have never seen a couple fight like they do. Luckily, Ardo seems to like me. I mean, if I were on his bad side, I'd be tempted to relocate. He could crush a Subaru with one hand. Uh, she won't know about the colonel, but that's going to be... Wish I could help you there, Tex. And the burglary, because we need something to solve. Yeah, you know, I remember Rook told me about the burglary. You know, I remember a stranger hanging around the past couple of days. It might be a dead end, but I seem to remember that the guy had these bright green eyes and a tattoo of an anchor on his arm. Right, so he had green mm, eyes. Mutant sailor. 
Right, so he had green eyes and an anchor on his arm. So. Now this place here is... Rook, Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. Yes, I know. And when we go in... Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. Just in case he's a really the old World War III vet with a face like a raisin and a tongue like a butcher's cleaver. Strange face I'm picturing. <laughs> what do you want, Miffy? Caustic wit, obliviously conversational, or cautiously inquisitive? Well, he's been a bit rude, so we'll go for caustic wit, I think. Looks like someone didn't get enough fiber in his breakfast this morning. Shut up, Murphy. The last thing I need right now is a yappy mouth wise guy. Mm. Sarcastic, I think. You know, I'll bet you haven't had enough coffee today, either. Look, Murphy, I've had a bad enough morning without you doing your comic routines. Last night, someone broke into my pawn shop. I don't usually have anything of great value, but yesterday, I gave out a fair amount of cash for an extremely valuable diamond bracelet. Mm -hmm. Detective humor. My deductive powers tell me the bracelet's no longer on the premises. Brilliant work, Murphy. Mm, sarcastic. We seem to be going down that route. Mm. When you're a seasoned PI, you pick up on these things. Now go on. The bracelet was pawned by a young girl named Emma Nimpton. She said she hated to hawk a family heirloom, but had no choice. She said she would reclaim the bracelet in a month. Well, since the bracelet was worth ten times eight thousand I loaned her, it was a good deal for me. Mm-hmm. Um... Investigate the facts, I think. Did you get any other information from this Emma Nimpton? She left a phone number. I called her this morning, but the line is disconnected. Top one. Casually inquisitive. Have you contacted the police? No, the police are a waste of time, and I can't afford to hire a decent PI. DC, yeah, pragmatic. I guess this means you don't consider me good enough to help track down the bracelet? I'd appreciate your help. I'm not a rich man, but if you find the bracelet, I'll owe you a few favors, which could come in handy. Could. Come back here, and I'll show you where they it broke is. in. Rook takes me out back and shows me where the burglar broke in. The back window is busted out and the latch is ripped. It's a sloppy job. As I start my investigation, I'm looking for information to enter into my crime link computer back at the office. One thing's for sure, Emma Nimpton won't be one of the suspect's names. Every PI worth his salt knows that's not my name spelled backwards. <laughs> that's quite good. I never, you know. <laughs> right, so that's the window. Well, obviously, the window was broken from the outside. Uh, so, is there any broken glass? Yes. Shard of glass must have come from that broken window. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Have a look at it. Uh, just one shard when it was there, but now it's a whole pile of broken glass. Looks like whoever broke into Rook's window left one of his hairs behind. Apparently, our burglar is a carrot top. It looks kind of pink, actually. Ooh, a footprint. Looks like a shoe print is outlined in that sticky pool of something resembling chocolate. Footprint's about a size 14. Like Rook always says, you can cut corners here and there, but there's nothing like a quality garbage can. Ooh, hmm. Looks like a key of some kind. So that's the pawn shot. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to do with the burglary in the alley, but there are a few things to look at. 
Every time I see yellow-gray water oozing out of a gutter, I just can't help but thirst for a cup of coffee from the brew and stew. Ah, no, this is good. Hmm, it's one of those basketballs they used to give away at Weenie World. This is a very dignified cutscene. Ten seconds left, down by one. Murphy has the ball, he fakes, he drives, it's a 360! He's fouled! Oh dear. This chain link fence doesn't seem to do much, except separate Rook's ugly half of the alley from Franny's ugly half of the alley. Yeah, for some reason, this is Rook's half. But for some reason, if you go around here, very slowly, Wow, a recyclable paper can. Finally, a glimmer of ecological responsibility. I didn't know Rook cared. For some reason, that's Rook's. Never mind. <laughs> Ooh, a radio. Oh, man! Oops. This dumpster smells like 20-year-old mayonnaise, and I ought to know. <laughs> that's what I eat for breakfast. Whoa! This antique boombox worked. I bet it only play the Bee Gees. Oh, and it's no silver. This old relic probably hasn't worked in years. Hey, there are batteries in here. Super heavy duty. Super heavy duty. Oh, and you can see some of the uh, fake. <laughs> oh, nice. Flat. Oh, it's the old Doom engine style. Yeah. yeah. Billboarded. There's a door up there. Looks like someone's back door opens onto the fire escape. Well, that steep staircase looked really hard to climb. Hey, this door's just painted on. Well, I'll be darned. Except for the filth and stench, the interior isn't much different than the average studio apartment. In fact, it's nicely furnished. Someone's been living here, and I wonder if he saw anything. I wonder. Maybe if we go away and then come back, he'll be there. Oh, I would love to see my ex-mother-in-law squeeze through there. Yeah. Now we're back on the street. Let's pop back in. Oh, there we go. Oh, God. Oh, looks like Mr. Bum is home for the evening. Yeah, what do you want? Um... <laughs> Bum camaraderie sounds a bit saucy. <laughs> Looks like you're busy drowning your troubles, my good man. Well, Mr. High and Mighty, what are you, a preacher or something? There's a slight problem with perspective here. The guy in the uh, can looks like massive. Yeah. Um. So he's like... on top of a pile of something, aren't they? Hmm. Bum camaraderie, I think. No, I'm just a man like you. Who's been down on his luck? Look at me. I'm crying. Now, what is it you want? I thought that said condescending git. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Click on condescending git. Just a few precious minutes of your valuable time. <laughs> Stab. You're yourself. quite a comedian. Why don't you take your act on the road? Huh. Let's try that again. Oh, right, so oh, there is no. actually some reason. you there. again. Yeah. Look, I'll warn you right now, I'm almost out of chocolate syrup, and I'm not in a good mood. Oh, make an offer, then. Oh, I don't think we've got anything at the moment, actually. All right, okay. Uh, kind of concerned and, and helpful, Look, then. I'll do you a favor. If you're free Thursday, I'll take you to the <laughs> Chocoholics Anonymous meeting. Spare me the insults, tough guy. If you got something to say, spill it. 
Mm, inquisitive. Well, I was just doing a little amateur sleuthing. God, you are a pest! <laughs> 